In this video, we're gonna be going over my home podcast studio. But before we get into it, I wanna tell you that you do not need a home studio that has all the bells and whistles to start your own podcast. All you need is a phone and a lav mic. I would consider that tier one of podcasting. Tier two is what I'm gonna go through here in a minute where you might be using some headsets and a Zoom H6 or something like it. And then tier three is having a full blown studio. So if you're considering having your first podcast, I wanna make it very clear that you don't need all this to start recording with guests, start having conversations and get your podcast off the ground. Back in April of 2019, which is exactly four years ago, I was using just my iPhone and a $30 lav mic off of Amazon. That got my podcast started. I also was using Anchor to then push that podcast out onto Apple and Spotify. The way I went about starting the podcast was thinking like this, the first zero through 50 episodes, all I was worried about was having conversations with guests and getting better at that. From 50 to 100, I started building systems of figuring out how I could best schedule the episodes, how I could turn the content into marketing on social media and other channels, and how I can get more people to actually listen to the podcast. Then 100 on, I had a system, I started implementing a team, I started outsourcing, and I started thinking about how can I scale my podcast. Now, if you're somebody that's starting right now, you can start from day one with the systems and the scheduling and everything. You can reach out to somebody like me that is gonna consult for you and help you get up to speed rather quickly. But if you aren't willing to show up week over week and press record, none of that matters. So what we're gonna go through here today, remember, if the goal is to start the podcast, you don't need all this. You can press play on your phone and start recording. Let's jump into what I would consider tier two of podcast recording equipment. When I was looking to upgrade from the phone, I stumbled upon a blog that fortunately led me to the Zoom H6 and a couple headsets that plug directly into it so I could record a high quality podcast with quality audio literally anywhere. I can fit the headsets in my book bag. The Zoom H6 comes in a carrying case, which you're also gonna be able to fit in your book bag. So you're gonna have a powerful podcasting system on the go. Literally anywhere, anytime, you can press record and you're gonna be guaranteed to have high quality audio. I've experienced this because I've gone on retreats, I've, I've traveled, I've recorded podcasts literally in office spaces, on rooftops, in different areas that have a little bit of background noise. I've even done a podcast in a car. So with the Zoom H6, you're gonna get that high quality audio regardless of your surroundings. This piece of equipment is great for on the go and great for giving you that quality audio. But some of the things I saw that I wanted to get away from was because the headsets uh, had the mics right here, it was going to block the person's face a little bit. It also didn't give us quality of a visual. I like the look of the mics a lot more than I do the headset mics. So if you're looking to upgrade to that more better feeling, that better vibe, and you wanna go from the headsets to a studio, here are some of the things that you're gonna to wanna to consider. Once you go from that tier two phase to that tier three phase, it's no longer just about necessarily the audio. You're gonna be thinking about the cameras and the lighting and the aesthetics of the room that you're gonna be in. And this is something that I wasn't familiar with. So I had a bunch of entrepreneurial friends and design friends help me build out my first studio in my office. And then I had my man, Scott, right behind the camera here, who helped me with this studio. In terms of the aesthetics, typically what I like to go for is a clean look. Some people like to go for different lighting where it's kind of darker and it has blues and reds and oranges. I'm the type of person that kind of likes bright white and welcoming and focuses more on the conversation rather than on anything that's gonna be distracting. So if you're looking at my videos now or if you've watched my podcast, you're gonna see that the conversation is the main focal point. There's gonna be some things in the background that give it that clean look where it doesn't look like I'm even in my house. So enough about the different tiers of podcasting. Let's just go into what do I have in my studio right now and some of the things that you should be considering if you were to build out your own studio. First things first, everybody wants to know what type of video equipment should I be using for my podcast? I wanna make it very easy for you. If you have an iPhone or if you have one of the newer versions of iPhones, the least you can do is use your iPhone to get started. If you're thinking that you need the highest quality cameras out there to get started because they can be pricey, just get started with your phone. If you do have some cash, 
to invest in your own equipment, the number one thing that you're gonna wanna be aware of is that a lot of cameras have a 30 minute recording limit. You do not wanna invest in a camera that's gonna shut off 30 minutes into your podcast, especially if you're doing hour long episodes. This is something that I learned the hard way. So because we had to go with no recording limit, I had a Sony a6500, which shot really quality photo and video, but it had a 30 minute time limit. After doing some research, I realized that the a6400 doesn't have the recording limit. So I actually sold my 6500, downgraded, downgraded to a 6400. Therefore I can shoot for over an hour long. Now this is a little bit pricey. If you're adding in the Tamron lens that I have, it's probably gonna run you a, the two grand range all in for both of them. I didn't wanna buy another one for two reasons. I wanted to buy a camera that I could also vlog with. I couldn't do that with this camera because you can't pull this out and see yourself. So while this is a great camera just for podcasting, and I'll probably upgrade to another one in the future, I'm also always trying to be very efficient with all of my content. So I went and got the Sony EZ V E. What is it? Sony ZVE10. Now the beauty of this camera is it shoots. It doesn't have the recording limit, and it has the flip screen, so I can vlog with it. What I do for my podcast is because the A6400 shoots in a little bit higher of a quality, I put that one on the guest, and I put this one on me, and then in post, I make them look as similar as possible. In the future, I'm gonna upgrade to having two of the same camera, probably another 6400 with the same exact setup, but for now, this works just fine. So even with my own studio and even being four years in, I'm still okay with not having everything perfect. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to consider when you have video is how do I not run out of battery? So another thing that I learned the hard way was I constantly was changing batteries and having to charge batteries when you can just buy a dummy battery. This dummy battery is just gonna last forever, so you turn your camera on and it'll just stay on forever. This is something that's huge when it comes to podcasting because you don't want your camera to die mid-podcast, you losing the footage, you losing the audio, and then wasting your time and the guest time. Now, something cool that I added in this studio, I have these wire cases where if you open this up, you're gonna have the extension cord in there and it's gonna hide it. So if, for whatever reason, I'm filming and you're gonna see something in the background, it's gonna be a very clean look. Uh, we'll have guests come in here and they'll take different videos and stuff like that. So just to keep everything clean, uh, white, white and welcoming, we went with that. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to consider when you have your cameras is storage. I use two of the exact same cards for my podcast and I only use them for the podcast. So I dump the footage after I record each podcast that way I'm not mixing and matching different cards and I'm forgetting where the different episodes are. I highly recommend you just invest in two SD cards that are purely for your podcast and the cameras that you're using for your podcast. Okay, now for the most important part of your podcast, the audio. If you do not have clean audio, it's not a great listen for the listener. And if the listener is your customer, you wanna provide much value and quality to your customer as possible. The easiest way to do that is to invest in the audio on the front end and not have to worry about making the audio better on the back end. So when we were considering what we should be implementing into the new studio, we were thinking of an audio interface that not only was gonna work well in the studio, but was going to allow me to transition into a virtual setup pretty quickly and keep the quality of audio very high. So we went with the Rodecaster 2 as our audio interface and plugged into that, we have Rode pod mics, we have Shure headsets, and then we have a micro SD card here in the back where we're gonna record that audio. I'm probably gonna upgrade to having a small drive that directly goes into this, and then therefore I'm not messing with the SD cards. Potentially I could lose it, potentially I could break it. Uh, with that drive, it would just go right in on the back here, and that's probably what I'm gonna look at doing next. The beauty of this setup is during the episode, when I'm recording, I can mess with the levels on the podcast as the guest is speaking. So one reason that we put this right here is some people tend to speak a little bit louder. Some people tend to be a little bit more quiet. So I can raise or lower their levels here 
while we're on the podcast and it's discreet. You're not even gonna notice it. A good example of this is my wife. She'll speak a little bit lower and then I'll speak a little bit higher so I can mess with these levels during the podcast and make sure the audio levels are coming out really clean. So on the back end, the audio engineer is not gonna have to do as much work. One of the things that you're gonna wanna consider that I don't think people think through until the, the last moment is making sure that you have arms that are gonna work well in your studio. So something that we were looking for is we wanted an arm that was gonna be really sturdy so that you can really grab this thing and be a little bit aggressive with it and it's not gonna mess with the audio. So one of the things that I prompt my guests when they come on here is that during the podcast, I want you to be as natural as possible and you literally can just like move this thing around and nothing's going to happen. The only downside of that is if you are trying to move it, it is sturdy and you're gonna have to put some muscle into it. You might have some feedback here when you're recording the podcast. So make sure that if you get an arm that is sturdy, tell the guests to get that in a good position prior to the episode. And then they're gonna be able to really just be authentic with how they're speaking and moving. Another thing to consider when you're using mics like this and the cameras is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you can see the person's face. So having the mic a little bit lower and having your seats a little bit lower so that you can see the person and when they're speaking and that way your content is going to be as quality as possible. So that's one of the reasons that I chose these swivel chairs is because it's going to have the person sit a little bit, little bit lower. It's going to be comfortable for them for an hour long. It's going to have great quality audio and video because you're going to be able to see my mouth as it's talking rather than if we were in a little bit higher up in a seat and the mics had to be like this. Another thing that a lot of people don't consider until the back part of setting up their studio is cord management. So the XLRs from this interface also need to connect to the other side and to that guest's mic. The standard XLRs are not long enough to go from here to there. You have to buy extension cables. The tricky part to this is sometimes they're three prong, sometimes they're four prong. So you're gonna wanna make sure that the XLR cables match up. So this one is three prong. When you get the extension cables, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that each end fits together. They have male and female versions. This, I learned the hard way. I ordered the wrong version and then I had to wait another couple of days to get the extension cords in. But as soon as I did that, I was able to easily put the cords underneath the rug. They go over to the other guests and you don't even notice that the cords are there. Now let's move into the lighting. One thing that I wanted to make sure of is I didn't want to have the lighting in the way of the room because I also work in here and I wanted to make it more of a homey feeling where there's not going to be things always in the way. In my last studio, I had so many lights around that you kind of felt like you were getting your photo taken at the mall and I didn't like that. So that's why we went with a Veripole system where it's just going to act like a shower rod. For the lighting, we went with the Godox VL150 which unfortunately is discontinued now. So in my gym, I have a similar setup and we went with the Amaram, which is gonna be a similar version to this. We also went with a lantern light here just to make it a little bit more soft. So that again, when you come in here, it feels very welcoming and you don't feel like the paparazzi is on you. With this lighting as well, just like I mentioned with the audio interface, you're gonna to have to worry about cord management. So what I did was I took the cord from the light and then use Velcro strips to go all the way around the Veripole and then down here. And the cool thing is I can easily switch the brightness of the light. And just like I showed you with the cameras, I can then hide those cords in one of those boxes and it becomes very efficient and effective for lighting your room. Next piece of lighting is two flat jacks. The cool thing about these is they have batteries, but you can also plug them in. So I have them plugged in when they're here in the studio, but I also have a flap jack in my gym where we use the batteries. The reason that we have these flap jacks is because we leave these blinds closed because we don't want the light variation from the sun to affect our video. So if you're going to be recording, I highly recommend getting something like this because if you were to record, let's say at 2 p.m. and your podcast goes till 334, that lighting is gonna change from the sun versus if you have this setup, the lighting doesn't change and it stays the same throughout the entire podcast. Now let's go into the accessories and the aesthetic of the podcast studio. As I mentioned before, I want it to be white and welcoming and keep it super clean. I kind of start from the outside in. What do we want to be shown in each of the videos? And then we're gonna build 
from there. Because I'm gonna be the person that's on every single episode, and I'm also gonna be doing solo episodes, I wanted to understand what did I want my side of the wall look like, and then that way we're gonna make the guest side look a little bit similar and it's gonna have a good flow. That's where Pinterest comes in and I started looking up just like plants and wedges to go up against the wall. I found this pretty dope ladder shelf where we had the idea to put some books on it, put some candles, put some old memorabilia, plants, and it was gonna give you enough color to provide depth, but it wasn't gonna take away from the conversation. After we decided on this, we then flipped it over to the guest side where I just matched the color of the ladder shelf with another shelf, books, some plants. We finished it off with my Thrive on Life neon sign. Now that we did the outside, let's work in. I wanted to get some stands that matched both the ladder shelf and the shelf for the guest. And I also wanted them to be functional. So another thing that you'll notice with anything that I work on, I try to make things as functional as possible. What I mean by function is behind here, we literally have outlets that are built into this little shelf here. So if the guest wants to charge their phone, if I need to charge the different lights that I'm using, it's all within one spot and like very clean and, and hidden. I picked this up from Scott. The one thing that you're probably not gonna think about is when people are grabbing this, that thing has a chance to tip over. So what we did was we actually put some sandbag weights underneath, shout out to Hyperware, that are holding this. You don't have to get real weights to hold this. I would just recommend getting some sand or getting something that's heavy so that it doesn't tip over when your guest is pulling on the mic. Now let's move to right underneath my feet. We put a rug in here to dampen the sound and then also hide the cords. This is not something that I did in my other studios very well was the cord management. The difference that I feel when I walk in here versus my other studios is 180 degrees. Being able to hide the cords and hide the clutter makes you feel at ease and is gonna help the conversation. So it's something that I highly recommend that you look into if you're gonna be building out your studio. The last thing that we're gonna go into is mobile setup. So when I was building out the studio, I thought through how do I utilize my seat as not only in-person, but virtual as well. So for the mobile setup, I'm just gonna move, bring this in, and then I can easily put this mic here. First things first, you're gonna wanna make sure that your audio is connected to your laptop. So we have this USB-C going into the back of the audio interface. That's then gonna get plugged directly into my laptop. Now the mic is going to be hot on my laptop. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is if you're going virtual, your video is going to matter. So if you don't have a camera that can directly plug into your laptop and you can use this as the camera. So whether you're on Zoom or Zencaster, Riverside, you can use this camera that you were using for your studio as your virtual setup as well. If you don't have that, the workaround is plugging in 1080p or 4K camera that you can just have sit on the top of your laptop. Most laptops don't have quality video directly built into them. So getting an external is highly recommended. You're just gonna wanna make sure that when you do the virtual setup, that you've done a test podcast before so that you understand the different settings that you need to turn on either on your interface or with your cameras so that the audio and the video come through quality while you're doing that virtual setup. Another thing with a virtual, you're gonna wanna understand what setup your guests have because if their audio or their video is off, that's gonna mess up the entire podcast production. Because we wanted to be fluid with in-person and virtual setup, I needed to get a double level stand-up desk that has wheels. So I can wheel this in and out of my studio and the double level is necessary because it allows my laptop to be here and then the camera to be on that next level. If you don't have the dual level setup, what you can do is single level stand-up desk and then just use your same tripods that you're using for in-person and put the tripod right behind the desk that your laptop is sitting on. That's the workaround, but fortunately we found this desk and it has been working perfectly for my virtual setup. And I almost don't notice a difference between my in-person and virtual because I'm using the same mic, I'm using the same camera, same flow. That has been a huge, win for me because in the past, the difference between my virtual and in-person created friction and inhibited me from really thriving when it came to putting out virtual podcasts. 
I'm hoping this video brought you some clarity on whether you're trying to start your podcast or you're trying to get to the level of having your own studio. There's one thing I want you to remember from this, it's that you don't need a studio to start. I'd love to see more people starting podcasts. All you need is that phone and that lav mic.